If you look at Buddhism in context of religions throughout the world, then you find that Buddhism is not the main religion in the world because Christianity and Islam are more numerous. Also, Hinduism is more numerous than Buddhism. But if you see the orange sector, we see that about 6% of the world population are actually uh, Buddhist. And this is, means that Buddhism is more uh, of a major religion than either Sikhism or Judaism, which are often uh, better known to uh, uh, students in schools these days. Talking about Buddhism in the UK, the actual figures for the population are only about 151,000. It's only about 0.3% of the population. I did a little bit of research and in fact, in some places in England, the percentage just goes up, up to about 1%. Uh, especially in Cambridge, Westminster, there are actually more Buddhists than in other parts of the country. But I ought to qualify these figures by saying that there are many people who practice Buddhism and respect Buddhism, but they don't actually call themselves Buddhists. Even in my own temple, I once asked my students uh, how many of them considered themselves to be Buddhist. And from a class of 30, only about three put up their hands. So that's not a very big percentage, even for those who actually come to a Buddhist temple regularly. But when I asked them how many of them put into practice Buddhist teachings in their lives, things like the five precepts or meditation on a daily basis, it was a much larger percentage, maybe half the people in the room. So this uh, helps us to realize that in fact Buddhism is often not something which gives a great deal of importance to how you label yourself, but rather it goes more on what you actually practice in your everyday life. There are different sorts of Buddhism in the world. And in this picture, you can see the first and probably the most ancient sort of Buddhism, which we refer to as the Theravada school of Buddhism. I asked some children what they thought the monks in this picture were doing. And some of them said that maybe the monks were pregnant because they saw that the uh, monks had a large lump over their stomach, which they weren't showing off. Uh, other children noticed that the monks were actually walking with bare feet. But the first thing I'd like to mention is that my own tradition, although I may be dressed slightly differently, is actually the same tradition as this one. The monks wear a very ancient form of rope, which hasn't changed in fashion for more than 2,500 years. And the fact that the monks are out and about actually uh, means that the monks are out doing something which is called collecting alms food. And what the monks have under their robe is in fact a black bowl. And the reason that the monks are concealing the bowl under their robe is that when they are out and about asking, uh, not asking for alms, when they are out and about and they are collecting alms, they don't solicit alms, they don't beg for alms from the people who are in their village, but they are walking to give the opportunity for those who are interested to give alms, to give alms if they wish to do so, because to give support for the monks is one of the things which makes up a major part of Buddhist practice. So those monks are out and about early in the morning with bare feet out of respect for the generosity of the people who might want to give to them. And they're giving the opportunity for anyone who wishes to give food in the morning to uh, approach them and to ask the monks to open their bowl so that they can give a donation of some sort. In fact, this picture tells us a lot about the relationship between the monastic community and the lay community in Theravada Buddhism. Because you could say that it's almost like a symbiosis between the two communities. The monks have a duty to serve the lay community, ministering to them, giving teachings on Buddhism, helping them to understand Buddhism better and to put Buddhism into practice in their everyday lives. Why? Because the monks don't earn a living, they don't have an income, they don't go out and have a real job somewhere else. As someone, some people sometimes ask, oh, if you're a monk, do you have a real job then? 
Well, it is their job. They are full-time monks and they don't do anything else. So the entire income of those monks actually comes from what lay people see fit to give to them. So if the monks do a good job of passing on what you might call spiritual food to the lay community, then the lay community will feel gratitude and they will want to support the monks with the minimal material needs which those monks might actually need. And the material standard of living for monks is a very simple one. Usually all the monks really need is some food to eat and that's only two meals a day, once in the morning and once before midday, uh, robes to wear, shelter to live in, and medicine if the monks happen to get ill. So if the monks give spiritual food to the lay people, then the lay people can give material support to the uh, monastic community. And doing this, spiritual knowledge gets spread around, everyone is happy, and the monks can continue to live their lives uh, and to research on the Dhamma, which they have more time to do because they don't have to go out and earn a living.